and welcome to Buggles Kelly Station. I'm Tom Marshall. I'm a photo colorizer. I also run the Will Hay Appreciation Society and I'm also a model maker and that's uh, what this video is about today. Buggles Kelly Station is based on the Will Hay film Oh Mr Porter and uh, that's what you can see in the uh, picture behind me. That's a photo that I've colorized from that film. So what I've done is spent the last couple of days doing a bit of work on that layout and I decided to film it all. See if you like it. Um, if you if you do or if you don't, leave a comment below. Um, it's something new for me just to try and show a step by step. The sort of thing that I like watching on YouTube anyway, so you might find it interesting, but uh, you might not. Um, but yeah, see what you think. This is me building a bridge and a buffer stop on Buggles Kelly Station, so enjoy. This is the area I'm working with. I basically left it untouched when I ballasted and uh, laid all the other track as I wasn't sure what to do with the bridge. Uh, this scene doesn't really uh, appear in the film Oh Mr Porter, which the layout's based on. Um, if you've never seen that film before, um, it's the best film ever made. So um, I've got it in my other videos. Make sure you watch that after this. Um, fantastic film. So um, yeah, I can have a bit of creative freedom with this uh, section of the layout. So I added the stream and I added this little siding. And the track I've used for the layout is Pico, Bullhead Rail Code 75 and um, it's just more realistic spacing than the Hornby track. Um, I prefer that. So uh, what I'm doing here is I've got a scrap of uh, card and the pencil. I'm just marking out where I want the start at the end of the bridge and it's on a slight curve so it's not going to be an exact uh, rectangle. Uh, and the nice thing about this um, bullhead rail is that it, it sits raised up above the sleepers which means that I need something about the same thickness as the bridge base. Uh, I've got some thick, uh, strong mounting board card. It's just very good quality, thick cardboard. And with the bolster wood I'm going to use for the boards on top of it, it should equal the height of the rails from the ground. So I just used a, a craft knife and cut out the uh, mounting board. Next up, uh, making the boards for the top of the bridge. And I want these to match the sleepers in thickness and the uh, craft knife and steel rule makes this an easy job. My glue of choice for card and wood is rocket card glue which sits very quickly and so I just work it in sections. And at this point I decided to try a test fit so I cut out a uh, section for a bit of interest in the middle of the bridge with a few broken slats. And I just snapped a few of the balsa wood strips for this and it was, looks quite effective. I stripped some of these sleepers off the track to test the bridge in place and the rail height matches nicely, it just looks uh, you know, very flimsy so I think Gladstone might fall in the water. Um, so what I've done is I've taken some MDF off cut uh, to look like a thick beam underneath and just cut this away so it fits into the riverbank. If I'd planned ahead before doing the scenery I would have embedded the bridge in place before the river but I just needed a couple of years to make up my mind. Um, just marking the position on there so I can glue it later at the bench and I've added two strips along the top too. These railings, um, they came from the, uh, you probably everybody's had this at some point, is the terrible Hornby turntable, which never seemed to work properly. Um, but yeah, the offcuts are ideal for the bridge and they're already looking rusty. So I just use a little pin drill to uh, put small holes in the bridge and bend the rails out slightly, um, make them look a bit more interesting. Now for the fun bit, um, I tend to use acrylics on wooden card models. Um, these tubes were ridiculously cheap. I think they're about six for a pound from Poundland and they've lasted me for around two years so um, that's pretty good value I think. Uh, you only need a little bit. Um, I've also got some model air paints to, which are in rust and khaki. Um, yeah so this is going to get messy. I'm really just blending up yellows, greens, blacks and reds to make various shades of brown uh, and then watering it down, covering the wood with the wash. So no real rules to this except the colours need to blend well. And just remember the area you're modelling. Buggles Kelly is a run-down, damp, wet, rural location and I'm thinking of the, you know, the bridge next to a water tower which would be really wet and mouldy, covered in soot, the usual railway dirt and grime, so 
that's what I'm going for. Um, and I use a paper towel to lift some of the paint before it dries. It'll let the, the natural wood show through. And then I just pick up some areas like individual planks in brown and green. And again, blend these into the rest of the structure. While that dries, I fit the trap down. Uh, the fish plates for this Pico Code 75 are tiny. Uh, it took me about half an hour to find these. Uh, don't lay track two years apart and then mislay everything. Um, so then I just uh, slid the bridge underneath, let the sleepers jut up to uh, either side of it. Um, I drilled a few holes in the sleepers, pinned the track down. Uh, they're much smaller than Hornby pins as well, so it's not as noticeable. And the Buggles Kelly Wheel Tapper Hammers, uh, they're available on my website. There's a link in the description. Now the track's down, we need to look at the buffer stop. Uh, I'm going to build one out of the same thick mounting board card. I'm going for a sloped bunker style. Again, just making this up, uh, really. Um, rocket car glue works well for this. And I've added some bracing on the inside. Next I paint the whole thing black, begin cutting more bolster strips which I attach vertically all the way around the buffer. And I want these to be a bit uneven um, and I, I add the buffer beam onto the front. This is all painted in a similar way to the bridge, but with an even darker wash. And then I pick out the buffer beam in red, a few planks in browns and greens, add more green on to embed it into the environment. It looks like sort of moss color. And then with a bit of water, I just blend those shades together, glue some ballast on on the top, and then that can be glued down into the scene. The next job is to weather the track so it can match the rest of the layout and get rid of the plastic shine. Um, I spray on some matte varnish, paint the rails and the chairs in some, some of the acrylic rust colour. This is going to be a heavily overgrown siding so rusty rails are fine. Um, then I use a track, track rubber and just clean off the top of the rails before ballasting. So there's nothing special here, just take your time and it'll turn out okay. I don't mind ballasting, I've only got a tiny layout so it's fine. Um, if I were Everard Junction or Charlie at Chadwick Model Railway then I'd not enjoy it because their layouts are enormous. But for this it's fine, so I use N-Scale Ballast from Bulk Scene, um, that's on eBay. Um, I just apply it with a teaspoon and then I use a brush to knock it off the sleepers. If you hit the rail heads um, with a spoon it helps to settle it all down. Then I use a spray bottle, just normal tap water, and a mix of 50-50 PVA and water with a drop of washing up liquid. And then I apply this with a plastic dropper, uh, again I got these on eBay, and just let it fully soak in. Um, and these droppers are really handy because uh, you can adjust the pressure. Um, you don't want to move the ballast around, so just work really slowly. So I let that dry overnight and it's all rock solid uh, and so I can add the last finishing touches and these little grass tufts are from warpainter.net, there's loads of other places you can get them, uh, find them on eBay um, and they have a really good strong adhesive so they're pretty handy to use. And then with neat PVA I'm adding fine leaf foliage from Woodland Scenics, in and around the sleepers just add some static grass. I use a blend of dead grass, autumn, spring flocks, so it's all never it's never one colour. And I'll just hoover away the excess. And the last little touch is a little bit of fine leaf foliage just poking through the hole in the bridge. 
and I think that's about done. So, um, thank you for watching. It's probably not what you came here for. Uh, if you came for colorized photos, I hope you found it interesting anyway. Obviously, if you've stayed this long, then you probably did. Um, give me a, a follow on, on Twitter at Photographics UK. Um, and I'm, my model making site on Facebook is Tom Marshall's Model Dioramas. I'll put links in the description. Uh, and uh, you can find out more about Will Hay. Um, at buggleskelly.co.uk. Like I said uh, earlier, the, the film Oh Mr. Porter is up on my channel as well. And if you've never seen it before, it's fantastic. It's the best, it's the best film, I think. I mean, I'm not just saying that from a railway film point of view. You don't have to be a railway buff to enjoy it. It just happens to be the, you know, happens to be set on a railway. But it's um, funniest film, I think. Uh, still stands up today, 80 years on. 80, more than 80 years on. But yeah, um, so you'll find that in the other videos. If I can work out how, I'll, I'll put a little thing up there or there. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Please um, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. And um, cheers. Bye-bye.